Hello everyone, I'm Rachel with Harbor Wild Watch here and I just thought I would take an opportunity on this beautiful sunny day to uh, give you a tour of one of my favorite local parks. So I'm standing here at Zamel Homestead Park, one of the Penn Met Parks properties, and I am here with my two favorite humans, Eli and Evelyn. And we're gonna take a walk around this park and sort of examine some of the wildlife that we can find here. So um, I like to kind of begin by orienting you to where we are. We're standing here next to the big meadow. You can see the cool cow statues up there. Those are a tribute to the Zemel family that uh, raised cattle here uh, for a number of years. But this meadow is really kind of fantastic for examining biodiversity. Come on kiddos, we're gonna look at some flowers. So because it is springtime right now and we're seeing lots more sunny weather, uh, the plants in this area are starting to bloom. And so we've got a variety of things. And what I like to do is just a little game. It's kind of just a little observation practice. Um, so we wanna look and see what we can find um, in this area and maybe take a count or, or a rough estimate of how many different species there are. So right here I see predominantly one flower. Eli, do you know what that yellow flower is? Or Evelyn, do you know? What? Buttercups. Buttercups, yes, we've got buttercups. All right, oh, hi Zoe. I see Tony's tuned in with Zoe watching. This is a buttercup. Um, which is a really, really cool species. And you can, um, you can see these really commonly um, in pastures. This is a, a seed that can pass through the gut of horses or of cows. Seeds come through just fine. So in places where there is livestock, there's quite often buttercup. Um, other species of flowers, can you guys look hard for some flowers? Other species of flowers that are really interesting. Ooh! You found something different? Oh yeah, Eli found some grass flowers. Good eyes, dude. Yeah, so the, they look just like wheat. Yeah, they, they are re related to wheat. So grass flowers are um, very, very short-lived and they put most of their energy into making seeds. Would, you found more flowers? Oh, here's some animals that are taking advantage of this habitat. Can you guys see that it looks like spit right here? And look around, there's there's more. What is that spit stuff? What do you think could be in that spit stuff? Do you think people are just hawking loogies out here at the park? Gosh, I hope not. Egg. Egg. It does kind of look like eggs or egg whites, but why would there be eggs here? Could they be insect eggs? Could be. It's from a little bug called a spit bug um, because they make this sort of frothy cocoon around themselves and that helps protect them um, because who wants to go into a, mus a big mess of uh, slimy spit? All right, keep your eyes peeled for some more flowers, guys. Oh, you found more buttercups. Nicely done. Ooh, here's some cool flowers I see. Now, this is a really common flower. If you are growing a lawn in your yard, you may be really familiar with this one. And this looks like a dandelion, but it's not the true dandelion that we're used to seeing. Notice how the stem is really tough and thick. The um, flower stem branches and the leaves are very compact down at the bottom. This is a cat's paw, which is a relative to dandelion. And check it out, there's a little aphid. See that little green bug on there, Emmy? Yeah. There's a little aphid on that. And what I like to tell people about dandelions is the but story about how they get their name. Oh, you want to say something about aphids? Yeah. Aphids can be bad though. They can be bad. Yeah, they're not great for the plant. Um, but they, they have their role um, to play. But, um, oh, there's even a little another little beetle. Gosh, look how many things, how much life you can see if you just stop and notice. How look cool is that? this one. You found one too. Oh, yeah, you found one with a bug on it too. Thank you for not picking it, babe. Yeah, look a little closer to find out what we want in there. Nice, I like your song, Eli. All right, so this one right here, um, this cat's paw, or it's a close relative, the dandelions, um, get their name, um, it means the tooth of the lion. And if you look at the shape of it, they have these little notches right around the outside of them um, that look similar to lion's teeth. And so it seems a very fierce name to give uh, to a really pretty little flower. All right, so let's look. We've got a wide variety of grasses here. If we look closely down in here, we can see 
Ooh, some really tiny flowers. I don't know if my camera is going to be able to focus on these, but some tiny, tiny little bean fl family flowers. Oh yeah, and so there are some trees that have been planted here. Eli, do you recognize the shape of that tree? No? Take a look at the leaves. Hey, it does not hurt it. It's, it's a little baby tree trying to grow. Yeah, it's a little maple tree. You can tell it's a maple because of the way it is. <laughs> oh, I see another flower. Do you guys know what this flower is? No. Maybe anybody in the comments want to mention what kind of flower you think this is? You know what it is? What is it? I can't remember what's name, but I know what it is. It's sticky and it can it's scratchy, so it's, it sticks on. To oh, the you're thinking you're thinking of a different one. Oh. Th this one is clover. Clover. Yeah, clover is a really common meadow uh, plant, and it's one that benefits a lot of other plants in the area because it takes nitrogen from the air and puts it into the soil. Um, and nitrogen is one of the elements that plants really need to grow. All right, kiddos, let's head back and cross over that bridge and see if we can find some evidence of animals. How does that sound? Yeah. All right, let's go. So we'll stick to the path. Although there's some cool, there's some cool plants right here. This is chamomile. Yeah, smell it, Eli, rub it and then smell it. <laughs> you just put your nose right down to it. That works too. I love it. Yeah, it smells really good. It's kind of got a sweet smell to it. <coughs> Excuse me. All right. So the park's trails here are open, um, and we've seen a, a handful of people jogging and walking and enjoying the beautiful uh, scenery that's here at Zamo Homestead Park. This is one of my favorite parks because it's got just about everything that you could want in a park. There's a really nice playground. You love the playground. No, we uh, got a really great playground. Hey, what happened to your toy? Oh, in your pocket, perfect, thank you. Um, there's a great playground. There is um, some ball fields and soccer fields as well as some um, tennis courts. Come on, Evelyn, walk on the trail, babe. Uh, there is also uh, like a building, so <clears throat> You can rent out this facility. I've seen weddings that happen here. They're really beautiful. Uh, then there's some more manicured lawn space. And then there's this beautiful wild meadow, um, as well as a ton of trails. I think there's like 99 acres here. Um, so it's a really great uh, area. And I really encourage you to explore. You can park in the upper parking lot and then all the walking trails are open. So you can kind of either take a left or a right and loop around the whole entire park. Um, oh, here's some nice flowers. Eli, do these ones smell? Oh, I see evidence of smell animals like already. It smells like sushi. I don't smell sushi. I smell it. You can smell it. I don't really smell. There, that one doesn't have much of a smell. Yeah, but it's hard to smell. But I. But did you see what animal I saw? What? I was on the flower. What kind of animal likes flowers? Bees. Yeah, there was a bee. Bees, butterflies. All right. Can you let's stop for a moment and let's and let's be really quiet and see if we can hear some different animals. Oh, there go some, a few birds. I hear lots of birds and I can see, you're right, there's, I don't know if you guys can see that, but the cottonwoods up here are letting loose their seeds and they have very cottony seeds and it looks like it's snowing right now in the middle of a sunny day in May. Kind of, kind of interesting and fun. So I, I can see just through the trees over here, some wetland habitat. And I'm not sure if it's coming through on the video, but we do have um, some bullfrogs in the area. Come on, Eli, did you hear the bullfrogs? They kind of make a mmm, mmm kind of sound. All right, let's see what else we can see. Now, um, this part of the park is really kind of great for looking at varieties of seeds. 
um, because there are some really interesting seeds. Oh, here's one that I can talk about. Um, well, I guess we can start with the, the cottonwood seeds. You can see how they get their name. Very cottony. Tiny, tiny little seeds that get transported on the wind. So wind dispersal is a really common... You found a purple flower? Go walk up to it. Oh, okay. it's seeds on seeds. Um, wind dispersal is really common, so cottonwood does it. The dandelions and those cat's paws do that wind dispersal too. Check it out. This is a lupin. Lupins are in the bean family, so their, fe their flowers look a lot like other beans. Um, really kind of pretty. What I like about lupins is their leaves. So on a rainy day, these leaves will actually catch little droplets of rain that are really beautiful. Ooh. I see you, little birdie. Up in that tree, there's a red-winged blackbird. And I noticed in the, in the tall tree. It, looks like a crow to me. it does look like a crow, but if you get close, you'll see they have red on their Broken wings. Head. Yeah. But from far, it just looks like a blackbird. Yeah. So none of these lupins, I don't think, are ready to make their seeds. But when they do, they have what's called ballistic seed dispersal. Oh, here's here's some. Okay. So these lupins are just now forming their seed pods. So you can see this fuzzy little bit right here. It's actually really, really soft. Hold on, babe. I'm talking about the lupins. So their, um, their seeds will elongate, they'll dry out, and then towards the warmer months, so July and August, these will be propelled um, just by straight physics. So what'll happen is the seed pod will dry out and it's kind of twisted. And so it will, um, on a hot day, or if somebody brushes up against it, either a person or an animal, it will spring load those seeds and kind of throw them out um, into the environment. Hey kiddos, can you come on back please? We're gonna walk down the lower trail. Ooh, they found a patch of lupins up there. Here's some other flowers. Ooh, and bees. <laughs> uh, we've got some, these are, uh, evergreen blackberries or trailing blackberries. These are a native species of blackberry and they mature much faster than the Himalayan version and they're much smaller along the ground. Are you all right? Can you go help your sister? You gotta be careful on those slippery slopes, kiddos. Um, back to blackberries. The native species of blackberries matures in June or so. Um, whereas the invasive species, which are all over, these are the invasive ones right here, they're much taller, they form larger kind of canes that arch, um, and they're just disastrous to get away, get rid of, uh, because they are so good at uh, reproducing. So they make tons of berries, those berries are eaten by birds, the birds then go to the bathroom, either on the fly or wherever they're headed, and drop those seeds the moist ground that we have here in the Pacific Northwest is perfect for those um, types of types of plants to thrive. Um, and so they just really take over. You can see this whole hillside here is covered in those Himalayan blackberries. Ooh, here's another invasive species. They're kind of fading now, but May is generally the month for Scotch broom to bloom. Um, it's another in the bean family, and you can see the, the fruits here. The little bean pods with their tiny little um, seeds that are maturing. Those will get bigger as the season goes on. And these two have ballistic seed dispersal. So this will burst, um, sending, you know, thousands of seeds from this one plant. You heard a cow noise? It wasn't a cow. It's an animal that likes to live in ponds. Can you think of an animal that likes to live in a pond? Yeah, a frog. It's a bullfrog. I let's this here. Let's go down on the path and see if we can get closer and hear the bullfrogs. You can guess the next one, Evelyn. So Zamo Park has got this beautiful natural wetland, as well as a few created wetlands to account for the parking spaces and impermeable surfaces that were put in when the park was developed. But this one right here is a natural wetland. Uh, it collects water from the nearby watershed that kind of flows downhill and ends up here in this little basin. And there is quite a bit of great wildlife that can be observed here. Um, we've seen ducks. Okay. You fell down? Yeah, oh. 
Okay, I'm so glad you're okay. Thanks for being careful. So we can see uh, ducks quite frequently here. There's a good amount of like uh, flying insects. So dragonflies and damselflies are really great to see here. And then if you're quiet enough, you'll hear the bullfrogs and chorus frogs that are here. At nighttime, most of them are um, very, very vocal. So this is a pretty noisy spot to be uh, listening to them. And then there's a lot of birds that take advantage of this habitat as well. So the cottonwoods and, and willow trees and alders here provide really great habitat. So we see lots and lots of, um, lots and lots of birds. Ooh, you can hear those red winged blackbirds just calling out. Um, let's walk a little further along and I'll show you kind of a cool piece of habitat that's been added to the park to try to bolster the population of a native species. Right over here, there is a nest box and this nest box is here to help bolster the uh, population of wood ducks. So wood ducks are tree dwelling nesters. They, they find a hollowed out dead tree um, and they'll make their nest inside there. And it's really remarkable what happens is they'll incubate the eggs and once the eggs hatch the very first day, they jump out of the tree down into the pond and the wetland and they never in their nest again uh, until they're an adult and they find their own tree. But we have um, some other tree nester species, the European gray squirrels, those big fluffy tailed creatures. They love to nest in tree cavities and they quite often will move in and displace the wood ducks. So having a nest box like this on a tall metal pole that um, keeps the squirrels out of it and allows the birds to have a place um, to nest. And you can see the surface of the pond here is covered in cottonwood seeds. It's, it looks like uh, somebody threw a bunch of foam out there, um, but it's just the cottonwood. It's normal. All right, friends, what are you guys, what are you guys noticing uh, in this habitat? Anything else? Yeah, lots of spiny plants. This is thistle. Oh, I heard, I heard the bullfrog. They're out there. So this thistle um, is a plant that does definitely does not want to get eaten. <laughs> Did you get a sticker on you? Just back up, honey. You got this. I'll carry you. That's the hazard of going off the big beaten trail is. You might run into some stickers or two. This is a very wild space, so we like to see that wildlife. But the thistles will have really pretty purple flowers. And um, come. this way, bud. Um, and their seeds, the thistle seeds are a favorite of small finches. So our native finch, uh, the state finch of Washington, the gold finch, leaving you behind babe loves to eat those thistle seeds so as we walk along we're going to transition in our environment away from this basin area that holds water and into more of a forest habitat so i love that walking this trail sorry for the not so steady camera work it's hard to film and walk and talk all at the same time we're managing i guess so as soon as you start to get into the shaded area, you'll notice the trees become much taller. We've got more of those cottonwoods. You can always tell cottonwoods, even when they're not releasing their cottony seeds um, by their heart-shaped leaves. They have almost perfect hearts for their leaves. Um, we've got some alder in here as well. Alders can tolerate having their feet wet, but they don't want to be submerged in the same way that a willow tree or a cottonwood can and then as we keep walking away we'll begin to see even more uh more forest type trees i always kind of go slow at this section because i quite often will surprise a deer along this spot this is a favorite spot for them to browse and uh, eat the greenery so as we get a little further away from that wet ground we'll start to see more of the conifer trees um, and they are I don't even know if I can get it all in one shot. Huge. We have some big, big Douglas fir trees. There are some hemlocks, western hemlocks. And here, guys, move to the side. Move to the side. 
these hemlocks are our native state tree, um, and you can tell a hemlock from the <laughs> from the other uh, by their their short needles. Um, there are also some cedar trees in here, so little, really closed little needles like this. Ooh, and there's about a 10 degree difference between the sunshine and the shade here. Um, these big, big, tall conifer trees provide lots and lots of shade, um, and they don't really like their feet to be too wet. So when you start to see the conifers, the, the what we call the gymnosperm group, um, you know that you're in an area that's not going to be totally wet all the time. Um, other evergreen shrubs that we have here, of course, Washington is the evergreen state, and it's not just those evergreen trees that give us that name. It's also the underbrush. Um, we've got some holly here that stays green all year, as well as some huckleberries. Um, so huckleberries right now should be having their, um, their, their first fruits kind of forming and their flowers. So these are in the same family as um, blueberries. So they have little kind of upside down little flowers on the underside of their leaves. And as those get pollinated by the bees and other pollinators, they'll start to form these fruits. And these fruits will ripen over the next couple of weeks. And we'll start to see huckleberries on the trail pretty soon. All right, let's see what other cool flowers. Oh, here's a cool flower. This is Miner's Lettuce. It's a, a really, really small one. Give you my thumb for scale here. Miner's lettuce is really high. Closer to find out what we want to know. We gotta look a little closer to find out what we want to know. You're pretty good at that song, Evelyn. You can tell we watch a lot of Daniel Tiger in our house. Um, that's a song from that, but it's, I totally stand by it. We're looking close and seeing if we can find evidence of animals or other, um, other interesting things. Here's another flower that, of course, is slipping from my memory right now. Um, and there are these gorgeous little bells that are forming. They are so, so tiny. There is tons and tons of life right here. And spring and summer is the time when most species, whether animal or plants, are trying to put forth their next generation. There's so much resources in the springtime. Um, that their offspring have the best chance of survival. So here's some more of those little minor lettuce flowers. Also some ferns in here. <laughs> All right, well, we're gonna continue uh, walking along and enjoying this forest habitat. I hope I've been able to, um, to show you a little bit, just the tiniest little couple minutes of um, exploring Zamel Park. And I hope that you'll come and um, explore this gorgeous place on your own sometime. Um, just remember that if the parking lot's full, the park is full. So uh, do your best, keep your social distancing up, wear your masks if you can, um, if you're gonna pass somebody too closely on the trail. Um, and other than that, just enjoy this amazing, beautiful forest and wetland resource that we have here. Thanks for tuning in. Uh, make sure that you're following the Harbor Wild Watch page as well as Penn Met Parks. Um, we love to see the shares and comments and likes and everything, all the love that you guys are giving us uh, has been wonderful these past couple of weeks. So keep it up. Thanks everybody.